Sixers fans, welcome back. Look, last night seemed improbable. Coming in to the game last night, I couldn't stream because I had work. You obviously guys know that I was sneaking in my phone the whole entire time. I saw the whole entire game from tip off to close. Um, it was an improbable situation. I was absolutely bamboozled that the Sixers won. I couldn't believe it. I mean, going into last night, I didn't think we had a chance. No Ben Simmons, obviously. No Joel Embiid. He was out for rest because the guy's been playing on one knee for about a year now. And no Tobias Harris because he's going through safety protocol right now. Danny Green gets hurt at halftime, and yet the Sixers, with the helps of George Niang, who, as you guys know, I've been a stan of for a few months now. Um, Tyrese Maxey with some nice assists. And, of course, Seth Curry and Andre Drummond. Sixers beat the full health Damian Lillard-led Portland Trailblazers. Let's get into the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family, do all that. Um, get into a K. I'm almost there. I'm tired of asking. Genuinely tired of asking. Let's talk about it. Um, I think we have to start off the night by talking about Andre Drummond. First of all, I want to read this statistic that I found on Twitter today so you know it is accurate. Andre Drummond is the first player to have 10 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists. No, 10 points, I lied. 10 points, 15 rebounds, 5 steals, 7 assists, and no turnovers since Hakeem the Dream in 1990. That's unreal. That is legitimately unreal. Like Andre Drummond, the dude's making $2 million a year and he's playing his butt off. It's been an unbelievable signing from the jump. Andre Drummond was like seriously playmaking the hell out of the basketball last night. Some of the passes he was making was just legit. Dude looked like Jokic out there. Jokic, the MVP. Dude, Andre Drummond can do everything you're doing except shoot. And he even made his free throws too. I don't think he missed one. I mean, maybe he went three for four, but I love the way Andre Drummond's playing this year. He's been nothing but fantastic. He's been nothing but sensational. Any other good adjective to use what he's been doing, it's been awesome. I am here for the Andre Drummond show. Dude finished with 14 points, 15 boards, seven rebounds, and zero, or seven assists, I'm sorry, and zero turnovers. That is really, really, really impressive. Seth Curry obviously had 23 points. He had, I think he had seven in the final couple minutes of the fourth quarter. Dude was just a bucket getter. He was the shot creator last night that the Sixers have been desperately needing since the departure of Jimmy Butler. And of course, my man, George Niang. That guy, the minivan, is the most creative, unathletic, but like successful basketball player ever. I mean, he is like so capable of doing everything on the court, but he just doesn't look like he should be good at basketball at all. But he's a stud. Playmaking wise, he was killing it. I think he had five boards, five assists. He ended the game with 21 points. At three for four from three, I believe. Um, dude splashed. Dude splashed all night. He was the catalyst for the ball movement that the Sixers were just distributing last night. I mean, it was it was a beautiful performance. They had 34 assists, guys. That's a lot of assists. That's the most they've had this year, and it's probably going to hold that way for a while because they only had 10 turnovers as well. I mean, that was one of the better team performances I've ever seen out of this Sixers team. The Sixers team is a lot of fun to watch, though I don't think we are an NBA contender, like a genuine championship contender as the team is constructed right now. Um, I think it's the most fun team they've had to watch. I mean, if you really think about it, all of the guys I don't like aren't here anymore. Raul Neto, or excuse me, Raul Neto, no longer here. We love that. Um, Mike Scott, the most overrated, terrible basketball player next to Burke on Court Miles, I'm just kidding, um, isn't here anymore. And we just upgraded with George Niang, who was a genuine stretch four, who played the five last night in some small ball lineups. And we were really successful rolling him out. And that was just a lot of fun to watch. Um, Sixers had six blocks and 11 steals. Defensively, they were unbelievable. Matisse Seibel is genuinely going to fight for the Defensive Player of the Year this year. I think it's a shame Rudy Gobert is in the league <laughs> because there is voters fatigue in every award except the Defensive Player of the Year for some reason, and that infuriates me because I personally believe that Matisse Thibel deserves it this year. You give him the minutes that he's getting right now, he's not even getting up 25 minutes a night. The dude's averaging less than 20 a night probably, and he's still putting up Defensive Player of the Year statistics. Um, I think he's a sure thing for the all defense first team, he has been nothing short of amazing. Like it's mind boggling. It's it's breathtaking watching him play defense. And if he can be a little bit more aggressive offensively, like I think he was trying to be last night, I could really settle for that. I could settle for for, for more Matisse minutes. And I also want to talk about the Sixers second unit right now with Shake Milton. It just looks so much 
better. The structure to the offense is so much better. Shake really brings this this offensive mentality to this second unit that I just think it genuinely needs. I do think, however, it would be interesting to see Shake Milton in the starting lineup and Maxi just completely run off the bench because I think Maxi is a better second unit player than Shake Milton. Um, I think Shake's been struggling with his shot, but he also just came back from an injury and he looks very, very good. He had 10 points last night. He's been aggressive attacking to the rim. I think some point in the third quarter last night, he was just really kind of being that guy when we needed a guy to be that guy. Shake, you know, accepted that challenge and Shake really was that guy and we need that. We need more out of Shake Milton. We need a more consistent three-point shot first and foremost, but I think outside of that, he has been everything that we needed and I, I am, I'm a huge Shake Milton fan. The dude's my favorite player on the team. Um, him and Isaiah Joe, who, may I add, made a three-pointer last night. That's my man. That's two games in a row that Isaiah has a three. Doc, give him more time. And I, dude, Seth Seth Curry is an absolute bucket getter. Um, I love watching Seth Curry just throw shots up. I don't care if they go in. I don't care if they air ball. I want to see that man put up as many shots as possible because the chances are it's a good shot and it's going to go in. Um, it also leads me to Furkan Korkmaz, who has been fourth quarter Furk for us lately. I mean, he's been having a great year. This is the best year he's had in his career for sure. Um, he struggled for three quarters last night and then came back to put up a really much needed fourth quarter. He hit his shots when he's open and that's all I've ever asked of him, but he's been even more than that lately. And I'm a very, very proud supporter of the way he's been playing. I don't like him. I don't really think he's a good basketball player for the most part, but the way he's been playing, I, it, it's hard not to just appreciate. It's hard not to, to respect and to, to maybe say I was wrong. So there you go, guys. Um, but to, to win that game against the full strength Trailblazers team that had Dame and CJ go, what, nine? Uh, okay, so Dame went seven of 20 from the field and then CJ went eight of 20 from the field. Not good numbers. I don't know what it is up. I don't know what's up with Dame lately, but um, Damian Lillard seems off and it's even, it, it, it's beyond missed shots for me. Like, dude, he's a, he's a, a consummate professional. The dude is an all-star. The dude is one of the best scorers in the last eight years. I mean, this is what Dame does. Dame's fine. He's going to go through um, mishaps. He's going to go through bad stretches like every scorer does, but he'll bounce back. But that's the thing that's afraid that I am of him right now is the fact that he's passing up shots. I saw him pass up two open three-pointers last night. One was mid-shot. He passed it up. Um, he got the assist for Norman Powell that hit a three on that possession, but it's the fact that he's passing up on shots that I know damn well Dame would never pass up on in the past. So for Portland fans, that's got to be concerning. Um, that's not a good sign to say that Dame's going to be headed out. I saw a tweet earlier today by Michael Levin, um, who usually puts out pretty good Sixers tweets, and it was something on the lines of like, nothing like the the the, the G League Sixers team beating Portland Um it's going to make Dame ask out in a way of Eric Bledsoe in the barbershop because if you guys remember Eric Bledsoe's story, he was just like, I'm out, like I'm done uh, when he was in a barbershop. But he was like, he said he was talking about the barbershop, but then he got traded from Phoenix like that day. So it was like, I don't know. That It was it was a funny tweet. If you got it, you got it. If you know, you know. Um, but it's just like, I mean, Dame, if you look at his stat line, he had 20, 10, and 7. It looks good, right? But... I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem. He went two of nine from three, seven of 20, like I said, from the field, and he just passed up open looks. Some of the shots that went in was questionable. I mean, he had that corner corner baseline fadeaway that hit like 13 parts of the rim, like the Kawhi shot where I was just like, I mean, yeah, it's a luck shot. But, you know, I think there's a problem in Portland. Um, and I think it's beautiful that this happened last night. Maybe it's a premonition of something to come. I love the chance of we want Lillard because... Yeah, we do. I think Damian Lillard here would be perfect, obviously. Um, I might make a video later today. You know what? Might as well. On a couple Ben Simmons trades that I think I have in mind that I put out on Twitter that are not kind of been circulating. So, you know, let me know. This is kind of a more laid back, casual video. Uh, almost 10 minutes long. That's a really long time. Really long time. But I would like to say that I love this Ben Simmons list Sixers team right now. I mean, I love it. Sixers ball movement looked fabulous. Everyone was popping threes. We had five dudes out on the perimeter shooting threes, making them. Dude, I'm here for it. Team offense, team defense. Go Sixers.